Let's go to the ring to March it Ladies and gentlemen, welcome inside the Desert Diamond Arena here in beautiful Glendale, Arizona. This is Boxing. This is Top Rank, presented by Hall of Fame boxing promoter Mr. Bob Arum. Brought to you this evening by AutoZone, get in the zone, and by Bud Light, the official beer of celebrations. This bout is scheduled for 10 rounds in the junior welterweight division. Our judges at ringside, Craig Harmon, Esther Lopez, and Dennis O'Connell. And the man in charge at the sound of the bell, Mr. Chris Flores. Introducing first out of the blue corner, presented in association with All Star Boxing. He weighed in at 139.4 pounds, wearing green and gold camo trunks. His record, 16 victories with two defeats. Eight of those victories coming by way of knockout from Leon Guanajuato, Mexico. Introducing out of the red corner, he weighed in at 140.7 pounds, wearing black trunks with red, white, and green trim. His record, perfect. 17 fights, 17 victories. 13 of those victories coming by way of knockout. He is a 2016 Olympian from Linares, Mexico. See on the left, the veteran trainer, Robert Garcia. We asked Robert yesterday, he always gives very fair assessments yes. of his rising prospects and French contenders. We said, all right, Delgado, where is he right now? And if he looks good tonight, how far away is he? And it's interesting because with Garcia and at his boxing academy, you have the ability to spar with guys who you can get that answer a little bit right in the gym. You know, obviously Mikey, his brother, is there. You get work with him. But Jose Ramirez is yep. one of his charges. He says that him and Jose Ramirez, they spar often. So he's, they're familiar with one another. And they probably will never fight because they are from the same stable. But he says he does extremely well against everyone he spars inside the gym. Tonight, for Delgado, it's going to be about taking what his opponent gives. Valtierra is a crafty fighter. Likes to box off his back foot, likes to set up his shots, usually over the top with the right hand. And you need to shut down a fighter like Valtteri because if he gains any kind of confidence, he can come on strong. Valtteri we saw back in July of last year when he was in against Raymond Murataya. Uh, Murataya, who was supposed to be on this card, but then an injury forced him out of this co-feature situation. And he was... He was definitely outworked and outclassed by Murataya, who many think of as another rising star and contender in the weight class, and went down in the last round. It was 80 to 71 across all three scorecards in that fight. And tonight for Volterra, what it's going to be about is knowing the history of the opponent. You know, Volterra, if he did his homework, he'll understand that Delgado just won 10 rounds for the first time. Mm -hmm. So it's up to him to push the pace early on the fight on the back end is where he needs to step it up even more because you want to keep that doubt in the mind of a fighter we have doubts especially when we're doing something for the first time so he wants to keep that prevalent in the mind of delgado throughout the entire night yeah speaking of doing something for the first time just having a co-main event status on a night like this when you have a packed nhl arena yes. with a huge world title fight coming up in moments it's more eyeballs it's more of a share of the spotlight yes it is and more nerves you know believe it or not delgado wasn't supposed to be on the main card and he got chosen or that's right because morataya fell out now you got to understand the change of mindset you know not being on the main card and then being 
like almost the opener here, the second fight before the main event. Well, what do you remember about that stage of your oh, career, Jimmy? Well, I mean, obviously you went on to be a Hall of Famer, yes. but there was a stage of your career where you're coming up and you're not in a co-feature slot. You're working your way just to get to the main television portion of the card. It's extremely dangerous, and it can be because if you're weak-minded and you allow the, the, the fans or the crowd to, let's say, pump you up and do things that you normally wouldn't do, you know, and there's the crowds can actually, you know, hinder you as well. You know, they can take a lot of energy from you. So it just depends on the mindset of Delgado. And right now it seems like he's handling it well. He's taking his time and he's absorbing what he needs to absorb and then he's gonna start setting his attack. End of one here. We mentioned Delgado when he was 12, going to Cuba to learn the Olympic style. Meanwhile, Volterra's father was a background in electrical and mechanical engineering, told his son his future was in boxing, encouraged him to turn pro at 16, which he did. He turned pro down in Mexico at 16 years old. We asked him even before that, well, what got you to the gym, Tim? He said, listen, and we've heard this story many times when you talk to pro fighters. He said, I was getting bullied as a kid. <laughs> I was getting bullied. I was getting, in his case, he was overweight. And yes. Here you have, you know, a smaller weight class fighter. He says, I was overweight. I was being bullied as a kid. So went to the gym, and it turned him into the fighter he is today. Well, the little, the little fat kid is still in him. I'm going to tell you that right now. He really is in him. But the difference is, is that he's a lot thinner now. But I'm talking about the toughness. That toughness was in that young man, but he knows how to fight now. That's the difference. There is the world champion, Emmanuel Navarrete, the three-division world champion. One of nine Mexican fighters to be a three-division champion. We have three of them here ringside tonight with us as he is getting wrapped up. Navarrete getting set to defend his title against the former two-division world champion, Oscar Valdez. It's coming up next. And there is Valdez. He is wrapped. He is getting loose. In his room, of course, Eddie Reynoso, the trainer for Oscar Valdez. Their ninth fight working together. Reynoso, the longtime trainer for Canelo, of course, has his fight coming up on September 30th against Charlo. And it's been interesting to see the evolution of Oscar Valdez, Timmy, with Reynoso, because the early stages of Valdez, when he was fighting in main events and thrilling all of us with the action-packed, aggressive style, he is a more sound defensive boxer puncher who actually shows up in the top 10 now, according to CompuBox, wow. in defensive efficiency. <laughs> well, he took a page out of Canelo's book. Honestly, he's, you know, he's basically a relative with, with Canelo Alvarez. He's adopted that high guard usage where you're deflecting shots and you're letting shots come in so that way you can set up your counters. We call that, we call that high guard traps. Double jab by Valtiero. The jab is the key for Valtiero. For Valtiero, the jab is the key. You know, that keeps your opponent off balance, out of rhythm, out of sort. And he has a good jab. He steps in behind it. He doubles it sometimes, triple it. And you see it forces Delgado back, making him have to reset his feet. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we will show you the punch of the night and a very familiar famous last name who delivered it. Don't go anywhere. The punch of the night is brought to you by the watch. He quickly dismissed Jorge Luis Alvarado Marquez. So that is the 19-year-old Emiliano Vargas. He's got a great personality. Yes, he does. He's, he's got a dynamic quality about him, and he can finish. And you are already touting him as if he stays the course 
Sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. I, I, I say two, two to three years, he'll be a world champion. He's young, so he can take his time and really build his pedigree, you know, in the professional ranks. And also, you know, continue to build confidence and get stronger. You know, that physical strength is extremely important. A lot of guys think that it's just skill, but you got to have some physical strength as well. And uh, speaking of physical strength, Spence found out that Terrence Crawford was strong. Was he ever. <laughs> and the man in the black trunks right here, Lindolfo Delgado, the 2016 Olympian from Mexico, 28 years old after his long amateur career, now 17-0 as a pro. He has a 21-18 to 18 connect advantage as we're in the midst of round number three as he takes on Valtierra. Trying to get around that guard is Valtierra with that sweeping right hand. See, the thing with Delgado is, is that he doesn't really set up his attacks off his jab. What he does is he looks to counter. That's what he's looking for. He's looking for the counter punch. He needs, what he needs is Valtteri to do some of the work for him. Double jab. Valtteri keeps his opponent busy with the double jab, not countering with the right hand over the top of that with the second one coming. There was an opportunity to counter with the right hand. Big shot. Glancing off to the side. Yeah, it was a short shot. Got Valtteri's attention, no doubt about it. See the movement from Valt Valtiera, you know, feeling confident, getting in the groove, trying to change up his rhythm, trying to give different looks to Delgado, trying to confuse him. See, when you get fighters like Valtiera, what you need to do is you need to use your jab. Instead of using the jab to the head, you want to use the jab down to the body. Hit the bigger target, the bigger frame is the body. Longer, the chest, the shoulders, hit something to keep him off balance. Delgado was sitting on that hook, tries to come back with it again. And there's that left hand that is able to land that time as Valtierra came in. Yeah, like I told you, Delgado again, he waits for offense to come. He's a counter puncher. That's his instinct. But he needs to learn how to pick up offense and create offense off his front foot using his jab to set up and set traps on his opponent. That's the next step for him but in his development. Down. And another one. Delgado, but Robert Garcia also sees an opening for the straight right because of the wide stance and how the left foot of Valtiera opens up. See if he can find that target with that right hand. There are the total punches through round three. And you can see Valtiera throwing more punches. Delgado more efficient at 33%, the natural counter puncher. Round four scheduled for 10. Then we will have our world championship fight. Navarrete and Valdez. Delgado really putting a lot of emphasis on that jab. He's stepping in with his jab, throwing a power jab. He's trying to push Valtteri back. Good left hook. And see, and the reason why that left hook continues to land for Delgado is, is because the right arm or the right hand of uh, Valtiera is, is down, and every time he shoots the jab, he drops his backhand. Oscar Valdez just relaxing on the couch in his locker room. He understands exactly what the task is in front of him. Obviously, he's the more technically sound fighter against that guy right there, Emmanuel Navarrete. Navarrete, who is wildly unpredictable, high volume puncher, a guy who has knockout power and great violence with both hands unorthodox unpredictable wants that wild exchanges 
But when we talked to Valdez yesterday, he understood what this setting would be like. And you can already sense it in this room. He understood who would be sitting ringside and what the expectation would be for what the fight looks like. And he acknowledges, listen, there's probably going to be points that I get drawn into it, that I get away from my natural advantage of being the more skilled fighter. Needs to be controlled violence, Tess. He can come forward, he can box off his back foot, but it gotta be, he has to be under control and underneath his feet. You know what he needs to be? He needs to be a knife. He needs to be sharp tonight. And I think he will be sharp tonight because he's the more active fighter. He's coming off, he's just coming off a fight some months ago. Just fought Blue Nose Lopez in a rematch. Of course, he had an injury prior to that and a long layoff. This world championship fight that we'll have tonight was supposed to take place here in this arena back in February. But instead, Navarrete was able to secure the vacant belt against Liam Wilson in what was uh, on the short list of fight of the year candidates. That was a drama-filled night we had then. Ooh, we yes, expect one tonight. He's never in a dull fight. No, never. Neither, neither guy is never in a dull fight, to be honest with you. Valtteri with the up jab. Coming to the end of round number four of our co-feature. sense of obligation that if Navarrete and Valdez are going to do this for this title you have to be here we're glad you're here with us this massive crowd that's gathered at the Desert Diamond Arena here in Glendale Arizona getting ready for Navarrete and Valdez it's round number five of our co-feature before the world championship fight Delgado right now Lindolfo Delgado the undefeated fighter in the black trunks with the Mexican flag with a 48 to 29 connect advantage let's check in with Bernardo yeah, I just spoke with Guillermo Enriquez, who's working his second fight with Valtier, and he says, look, he just can't throw one punch at a time. He's got to throw combinations, and he's got to work behind the feints to change the tide of this fight. He's only landed seven power punches to this point, and you can hear this crowd, this crowd that enjoys a distinct style of fighting <laughs> that they are not seeing right now between these two. I noticed that fighters from Arizona they fight with aggression. They fight with emotion. You know, you look at guys that were raised here or grew up here. That's what they bring to the table. You had some early fights early during the day where you had two fighters from Arizona, and they went at it. They, they brought the pain. There's a good counter on the inside from Delgado as Valtero fell in behind that right hand. Moral of the story, they like to see fights. They like yes. to see action. That's the moral of the story. They will get plenty of that in the main event, for sure. In fact, interesting stat on Emmanuel Navarrete. You know, you comb through so much research, Timmy, on your way to arriving at a fight like we're going to call tonight. And then you start looking Ooh, at the copy box numbers. There's a good left hand, and then he goes to the body, does Delgado. You look at the combination punching of Emmanuel Navarrete. Emmanuel Navarrete throws combinations of four or more punches 25% of the time. 25% of any combination he throws. Most guys are one, two, right? Yes. A jab right hand. 25% of the time he is throwing four or more punches in his combinations. Look, that can work for you, but it also can work against That's right. you because you leave yourself open. And the way that Navarrete sometimes throws his punches off balance, you know, he leaves himself wide open for counters. And on the flip side of that, when you're throwing combinations, it keeps your opponents defensive, defensive-minded. So they kind of keep their hands in their pockets, so to speak. Some good moments here in round number five from Lindolfo Delgado. Not enough combinations from, from uh, Lindolfo Delgado. From either guy. Yeah, not enough combinations. A lot of single shots, maybe two shots, left hook, but not enough variation in their punch arsenal. And a five.
Great scene here in Glendale, Arizona. Joe Tessitore, Tim Bradley, round number six between Delgado and Valtteri. You see on the left there, the current odds for the world championship fight that's coming up. Now, this is a big change, Timmy, and this is what we call late money. Oscar Valdez was hovering as a minus 165 favorite. In the world of boxing, that's not an overwhelming favorite. But in the last few hours, the word we started getting, and then we checked, he's now minus 240. So all the late money is coming in on Oscar Valdez to take the title from Emmanuel Navarrete. The other word we're getting from the desert just north of us, the boys in the desert, is that the late money's also coming in on the over. So there's a lean towards Valdez controlling things, okay. winning things, and a distance fight. We will see. Obviously, if Navarrete has it his way, it's the complete opposite of that. I don't, I don't see a distance it's fight. It's a steamroller the other I, way. I don't see a distance fight. I, I see a flat-out knockout either way. Both guys possess enough punching power to turn each other's lights off with one punch. I think this fight has too much at stake. You got the world championship. You got legends here that are going to be watching. You got a huge crowd. Trust me, these guys are going to go in there and they're going to tear each other up. Somebody's getting knocked out tonight. Well, let's take a look at the locker room of the guy who says he guarantees it. The guy who says this fight is ending by knockout. And that is the guy who has put forth 31 knockouts among his 37 wins. There is Emmanuel Navarrete. He's finally getting gloved up. Timmy, we saw Oscar Valdez relaxed, warming up, taped up on the couch. It took 33 minutes, according to our crew that is in the locker room of Navarrete, 33 minutes for him to get taped up. Mm. And that's just for perspective, Valdez, it took him 12 minutes to get wrapped. Well, that's just the way he does it. You know, each camp do it a little bit of diff do it differently. I don't think it will affect the fight whatsoever. And there is a loose and calm Oscar Valdez, who has talked about this moment, talked about that feeling of being El Campeon. He was a two-division world champion. He lost to Shakur Stevenson. Obviously, Shakur Stevenson, one of the best fighters in the entire world. That's the lone loss. But he says, I am so hungry, so hungry to get that belt back. Tonight, he gets that opportunity in what will be a legacy-defining fight, an all-Mexican clash. I'm just waiting on one of these gentlemen to start turning it up, start throwing more combinations and taking a little bit more risks to separate themselves in this fight. I mean, Delgado is winning this fight just with his counterpunching alone. But if you really want to leave an impression to the 140-pound division, it's time to step it up. Delgado may be stepping towards him a little more here as we come to the end of round six. See what he offers in seven. Dolfo Delgado trying to move his mark to 18 and 0 has a 78 to 42 punch connect advantage. So we start round number seven as you see the total punches according to CompuBox right there. Remember the first scheduled 10 rounder in the career of Lindolfo Delgado as he was elevated to this co-feature status after Raymond Murataya suffered an injury and wasn't able to take the fight. 
Look at the right side of Valtierra's face starting to swell up from the left hooks that Delgado's been landing on this right side. Most effective left hooks came the counter shots in round number five. He's been building on that. Eddie Reynoso and Oscar Valdez. A little trim work, just some final stitching being cut off the guard on the belt line of Oscar Valdez. His last fight was May 20th. Remember, that was the co-feature on the night of the tremendous Devin Haney, the Silly Lomachenko card at the MGM Grand. It was the rematch with Adam Blue Nose Lopez, a fight that Oscar Valdez controlled throughout. That was a rematch. And now being stretched out is Emmanuel Avocado Navarrete. Those long arms being pushed back. Six inch reach advantage for Emmanuel Navarrete. Halfway through round seven here. Delgado offer perhaps a little more offense down the stretch. Crowd's getting a little restless. Again, wanting to see more action. Oh, nice uppercut right there from Delgado. Good jab. jab from wow. Valtierra. That was the one thing that he told us in the fighter meetings that Delgado doesn't keep get his head up off the line, that he'll be there for his straight shots. And there it again. There it is again. Double jab right down the middle, catching Delgado. If he could only Ooh. put a right hand behind it, Good though, Tim, he's only landed 11 power punches in the whole fight. You want to know something? When you, when you throw that right hand, I feel like you're left out there. <laughs> it really right. does. Because you are. <laughs> you are. So, you know, Valtiera, he's getting hit with those left hooks. He don't want to throw the right hand because those left hooks has kind of tamed his hand at home. That right hand at home. Coming to the end of seven of our co-feature. World title fight to come next. Packed house for top ranked boxing on ESPN. And two weeks from today, at 5 in the afternoon on August 26th, we will bring you the Unified Heavyweight Championship. Alexander Usyk putting all three belts on the line. 20 0 Usyk against Daniel Dubois. Of course, Usyk, the wildly skilled southpaw, the former undisputed cruiserweight champion. This will be the second heavyweight defense he makes after his back to back wins against Anthony Joshua. So that is Alexander Usyk. Daniel Dubois on ESPN Plus, August 26th. Timmy, you and I will have the call of Usyk Dubois starting at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. That fight taking place in Poland. Does anybody want to know what, what's going to happen in that fight? Well, we also called Dubois' last fight, so we have a pretty good answer unless he's improved greatly. Because when we were over at Tottenham Hotspur on the night of Tyson Fury's championship fight, that was a shaky evening for Daniel Dubois. And it was against the Southpaw. That's right. Not named Usyk. There is Oscar Valdez. Gloves are on. Reynoso is taping up the outside as the commission looks on. Valdez has talked about getting to a place, those dark places that he's been to before. Remember, this is a fighter that has fought through a broken jaw. This is the kind of night when you face a fellow countryman, Mexican rival like Navarrete, where you know where the fight can go. It's exactly where Navarrete wants it to go. He wants an absolute war. He says, I have committed to it. On my end, I am going to give everybody the fight they expect, the fight they want. Just missing the uppercut that time was Delgado as Valtierra came to the inside. How the uppercut lands. Those mitts. Warming up those long arms. You know, he uses that length to his advantage in ways that you don't think about. Typically, if you say you have six inch reach, you're thinking the jab staying on the outside. This is a guy that'll lunge with an uppercut, a left uppercut that nearly scrapes the canvas <laughs> as it's coming up from yes. out of range. He will throw a left uppercut that to the eye 
of a veteran ringside observer you would say has no chance of landing. It's too far away, and yet he lands it with destructive force. Because the way he throws it, the other fighter is saying, what the heck was that? That's what he's saying to himself, what was that? And he doesn't see the shot coming. But Tess, to add to that, I've noticed that when Navarrete, when he shoots that uppercut and when he misses and he's seemingly looks like he's off balance, he throws another shot, hard shot, because he understands how to control his balance in those moments. He's one of those mid-air guys. Yes. He's one of those he can, off balance guys who can change his punches in mid-flight. Mid -flight. Yep. <laughs> Glad you're with us here. WBO Junior Lightweight World Championship will be coming up in moments from this desert diamond arena in Glendale, Arizona. Emmanuel Navarrete will be defending. He won the WBO title here, but up from a knockdown to do so back in February. This is round number nine, scheduled for 10. Landolfo Delgado in the black trunks trying to stay unbeaten. He has a 114 to 56 connect advantage against Javier Valtiero. All right, Delgado got Valtiero used to the left hook. Now he's going to try to land the right hand. That's what he's looking for. He came out in the first round, in this round right here. He threw three right hands. They landed. He's looking to time that jab of Valtiero. Oscar Valdez with Eddie Reynoso. Hitting the mitts, he said, I'm more motivated for this fight against Navarrete than any fight I've been in. Now consider who he's been in against. When he fought Miguel Burchelt, Miguel Burchelt was the boogeyman. He was one of the most destructive offensive weapons in the sport. Valdez was an underdog. When he fought Shakur Stevenson, Shakur Stevenson was undoubtedly the guy, one of the most avoided fighters in the sport, thought of as the ultimate rising star. And yet it is this fight against his fellow countrymen in Navarrete because of what Navarrete brings to the table, how he wants to fight, what it means to their legacy, ethnic and national pride that he says motivates him more than anything. Halfway through round number nine, you see Navarrete warming up in his locker room. We'll get to those ring walks in just a moment at the conclusion of this co-feature. There's a lot of swelling on a Valtiero. It's a bit unusual, the amount of swelling on that right side. Delgado's taking his time and just being surgical right now with his work. Good body work right there from Delgado. He's really breaking down. He's starting to break down. Valtiero. So he has 12 body punches to this point. But you can see the oh, good uppercut. You can see the life starting to get sucked out of Valtiero. He's not as active as he once was. Our first 10 rounder for Delgado in his career, but he is in control against Valtiero, who is not threatening him, especially down the stretch of this fight at all. And thus the reaction from the crowd. Tenth and final round of our co-feature coming your way here. And then we will have the one everybody's been waiting for. Everybody, including Mexican legends of the ring who have come out to be ringside tonight. We told you Castillo's here in Carvajal and Julio Cesar Chavez. But after this fight, we will visit with Marco Antonio Barrera and Eric Morales, who, of course, gave us one of the greatest trilogies in the modern era of the sport.
and they have been ambassadors of sorts all week long and playing a role in this all Mexican rivalry between Navarrete and Valdez and we will hear from both of those living legends of the ring in just a moment it was interesting a few hours ago they were actually in the locker rooms yeah. with the world champions and just to see the interaction it was all smiles then and now how the disposition and Exchange. everything changes and you see how tense it gets the preparation how hyper focused everybody is in each locker room Target practice now for Delgado. No, stop, stop. That is by Chris Flores, our referee. See, what you're witnessing now is called the shutdown. Delgado has countered every single punch stop, stop, of Valtierra. No now Valtierra is afraid to throw a punch. And when he does throw a punch, he gets hit with shots like that. Shot to the body, right to the spine. Hear that area. thud. My Nearly goodness. came back with the left hook as well. Uh, you can tell Delgado has heavy hands, heavy, heavy hands. You just want to see him be a little more offensive. He's just being smart. Yeah. You know, he's in there with a, with a tough guy. You got to understand that Valtierra went the distance with Martaya, and Martaya is a puncher as well. So Martaya nearly got rid of him in that yes. last round. Yes. And that was a complete shutout. Ooh, Goes underneath with the right hand to the body. Came up top with the right hand, trying to counter over that left. See, that's what I like. I like the work. I like the work of an aggressive counter puncher. You know, you dictating the pace. You're getting off your shots. You're making a miss, and then you're countering him again. more of the same you know Delgado just made it made it a choice just to just to pack it in he hit him with every hard shot he possibly can and Baltera didn't go anywhere so he's just taking his time going the distance he's okay with that so it goes the full 10 first time he's done that Condition it looks strong. Big crowd here at Desert Diamond. The inspiration for this fight and to upset the standard for what a Mexico robbery is about in the ring. Bueno, primeramente estoy muy contento que nos tomen como referencia. Ya pasaron 23 años de la primera pelea, entonces que las nuevas generaciones como es Valdez y Bacón Navarrete se mencionen y se reflejen en querer llegar, no llegar, sino ser mejor que lo que hicimos Eric Morales y yo para mí. Estoy muy contento. It's an honor and a privilege that the youngest generation still look to us after 23 years from our first fight as that inspiration and to not only want to do what we did, but to surpass what we did in our rivalry. Para ti, la inspiración que, que le brindas a estos peleadores de querer ser como ustedes. Well, yo creo que todo es evolutivo y, y a mí me daría más gusto ver esta noche una gran pelea, una mejor pelea que you know it's, it's all about evolution and it would actually be so gratifying to see a better fight tonight between Valdez and Navarrete than what we were able to do in our three fights starting 23 years ago you're an analyst and you're also a fighter what's your prediction for tonight tu pronostico como analista y boxeador hacer una pelea muy complicada punches that he's not supposed to land like Navarrete and especially because his right hand is so powerful but if Oscar Valdez is able to land that left hook just short and powerful like he did against Miguel Perchelt then he could put Navarrete to sleep I can't even tell you who's going to win the fans are going to win tonight because this will be a memorable fight Joe, these are the legends if they can't even call it what can we do? Yeah, but... Now we go to the judges scorecards for the official decision Dennis O'Connell scores the bout 98-92. Craig Harmon and Esther Lopez both have it 99-91. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. Lindolfo Delgado.
Colorado coast to 18 and 0 with the unanimous decision. And now we get set for the big one. Oscar Valdez and Emmanuel Navarrete. As Oscar Valdez has talked about the fact that he cannot lose focus.